Hi, I'm Pastor Bill Vigio of Meet of the Word Ministries, and once again I want to give you a brief video context in regards to feeding your faith and starving your fears. So very important that we, in, in moments like what we're going through, end time moments, that we starve our fears as Christians. I'm not talking about being self-righteous now. I'm talking about dealing with our fear like David dealt with his fear when I am afraid. Fear will come, but how are you going to react to it? Now, I want to talk to you today about the leper that Jesus healed uh, of, of leprosy, a skin, a skin disease. And it's found, it's such an important story because it's found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke's testimony. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus had just finished calling his 12 disciples, setting them apart, and then preaching to the people, uh, the Sermon on the Mount that we call it. And it says that when he came down from the mountain after teaching that, the man obviously had heard what Jesus had to say, and it says he worshipped him. And Jesus asked him the question, will you be healed? And the man said, yes, I will be healed. And Jesus healed him there. It doesn't give us too much detail, but in Mark's gospel, chapter 1, uh, and actually this is Peter's gospel, this is something that he remembered right off the bat after the Sermon of the Mount. This man came and he knelt down and he worshiped the Lord Jesus Christ and he said, you can heal me if, you know, if you want to. And Jesus said, I want to. And it says that Jesus touched him at that time. Now, this was forbidden according to the law of Moses as, in, as interpreted by the religious leaders of that day. Uh, it really was not the, the, the law of Moses. Moses still wanted us to have compassion and, and to be healed. And to be healed, we were to go ahead and show the priest that we have been healed and offer a sacrifice for that healing. Uh, but um, the, by this time, by the day that Jesus had come, uh, they, they had misinterpreted the word of God. Jesus said all that the Jewish leaders that sit in the seats of Moses, he, he said, listen to what they've got to say, but don't do as they say, because they say, but they do not. They're hypocrites. And so Mark identifies this, and it says that the man came, knelt down. His worship was not just words. He knelt down, and it says that Jesus had compassion on him and touched him, and the man was healed. The same thing in Luke chapter 5, Jesus again, this man comes to him and said, Lord, you can heal me if you want, and Jesus said, I want to. I will that you be healed. And Jesus touched him. He touched his skin. And the leprosy, the, the deformity of his skin was healed. And then in all three of these stories, Jesus went on to tell them, tell that man, don't go tell anybody. But he obviously did because in Luke's gospel, it tells us that all, all the people came to hear and to be healed of their diseases and infirmity. So the word got out, but Jesus wasn't trying to draw attention. He wasn't trying to be self-righteous or, you know, be a big shot or anything like that or build the biggest uh, mega church thinking that that was the that that was the sign of God really being with him. He told the man, "You don't tell anybody. You go and you offer to the priest the sacrifices that you are supposed to have." given to them when you're healed. So the man was healed. Again, Jesus prayed for him. Number two, Jesus wanted to heal him. Number three, Jesus had compassion on the man. And number four, Jesus was not afraid to touch his skin. He starved his fear. He touched that man, and that man was instantly healed. Now, I, again, these are brief videos in regards to feeding your faith and starving your fears. If you are a Christian, do not be one of the accusers of the brethren. We've got a lot of people out there today that they've, been, they've gone to Bible school, Pentecostal Bible schools, and they find fault with that. 
they will call you self-righteous for that. Don't be ashamed of, of doing that, of going out there and fulfilling one of the six foundational doctrines of Christ, which is to lay hands on the sick, the ministry of laying on of hands, praying for the sick, uh, and, uh, you know, no condemnation on my end. But don't put, try to put condemnation. I'm not going to accept con condemnation for going out there and doing what Jesus said to do. Jesus said, the works that I do shall he do in greater works because I go to the Father. He wants us to be doers of the word. He wants us not to be afraid to do it. But we've got so many people today, Christian people, that are more caught up with their fears than they are with the responsibility. Now, if you don't want to pray, fine. Don't pray. You don't want to, you know, pray for the sick, fine. It's your prerogative. You have a right to do that. But don't sit here and tell us that we're supposed to obey civil governments in our land, in America today, that tell us that we can't come together and go to church. If I want to go to church, I'm going to go to church, and I'm not going to feel guilty for it. And if I'm, you know, and again, if your conviction is wear the mask, wear the gloves and stuff like that, and think about other people, that's fine. I have no condemnation for you whatsoever. Just don't condemn those. And don't accuse them of being self-righteous because they understand what the Word of God says and what Jesus said to do. That's what I want to share today. I hope you are listening and little by little that you'll grow up in the things of God and accept responsibility and care and have compassion for people as opposed to thinking just for yourself and accusing us or accusing me of doing what I believe God's word says very clearly to do. You have a great